This module is about coordinates and projections. It covers the uh, following learning objectives. First of all, we'll talk about difference between Cartesian and spherical coordinates. Then, um, what are geographic coordinate systems? Later, we'll talk about geodesy and how it is used to model the Earth and develop various datums. And lastly, we will talk about developable surfaces and how they are used for geographical projections. So first of all, coordinates. Now, coordinates connect different points in space. It's basically coordination among points of space. For example, if we have these two cones, um, a, one of the connection could be what is the path between these two cones or what is the distance between these two cones. Now, with our intuition, we would connect the two cones with a straight line. And then if we are trying to um, measure the distance, we will develop a notion of distance and then measure how far the two, co uh, two cones are. So um, we may make one of these cones or some other arbitrary point as a reference and then we can determine distance of all the points along the line from that reference point. And that way we can access all points in the underlying space. And so the coordinates are just developed. But the question is, have we taken into consideration the underlying space? We have developed a system to help uniquely determine relative positions between physical entities in space but what is the underlying space? And here are some examples where this may not have worked. If these two cones were placed on the curve on a road, this is a curve in 2D space. So this straight line idea doesn't apply. It may apply for these two cones in a parking lot, but then if the two cones are in London and New York, again, this is a curve in 3D space. So this idea of straight line will not apply. So space has many shapes. Space also has many dimensions. We could have uh, in, in simple Euclidean space, which is also called the flat space, we have 1D, which is real line, 2D, a plane, and a 3D, a volume. But this can also exist in non-Euclidean space, which we just talked about in curved road, for example, which in 1D, it's a curved line. In 2D, it's a curved surface. And in 3D, it's a curved volume, basically. So um, we have to take all of these cons things into co to consideration. So here are the examples of the two um, Euclidean and non-Euclidean multidimensional spaces. If I'm looking at a straight linear road, it's a 1D flat space. If I'm looking at a parking lot, it's a 2D flat space. And if I'm looking at a building frame, it's a 3D flat space. But non-Euclidean space could be a curved road. So if I'm traveling along this road, the rules of flat space don't apply anymore. If I'm following water in a watershed, the surface of the watershed is a 2D non-Euclidean space. Likewise, if we extend the idea to three dimensions, um, a black hole is a very concentrated, uh, concent high concentration of mass, so the space around it is curved. And so it's a three-dimensional curved example of um, non-Euclidean space. Well, if we, if, if we see that our real life is mostly non-Euclidean, we are in big trouble if you're trying to fit our common notion of straight lines. But fortunately, there's a concept of manifold. The manifold it means locally Euclidean space. We are, are very intuitively comfortable with flat space. Uh, so any non-Euclidean space that behaves flat on a local or small scale is called a manifold. So here are two examples. Let's say we are looking at a curve. And if we take a small section of the curve, we can almost think of it as a straight line. So this is a manifold because it's a non-Euclidean space, but locally it is Euclidean. 
Here is another example, a sphere. It's a non-Euclidean space. But if I take a small region on the surface of the sphere, it can be uh, treated as a plane. So this is also a manifold. Here are two examples of something that is not a manifold. Intersection between roads. Um, I cannot take this point and convert it into something flat, like a straight line. Um, a fold of uh, a paper. This wedge part here cannot be converted into a flat surface in any way. So these are two examples of uh, some non-Euclidean non space that is not a manifold. And what it what basically we do we run into something like this we skip it we we don't we we deal with this side separately the other side separately and we ignore this part so with that knowledge here is some terminology that you come across in map making all the time um, so a manifold is a non-euclidean space that behaves euclidean locally and a chart is a small region of the manifold viewed as the Euclidean or flat space. So if this circle is a manifold, of course, I take any small portion of this circle, it is flat, it is straight line. So any small portion that I can treat as a straight line, and once I make a straight line of it, it's called a chart. So I can take a circle and make many charts on, on its on its um, along its along its length and in this case I've made four charts and an atlas is a collection of the charts of a manifold and so if I find all the charts that fully cover the manifold and I make a set of those charts it's called an atlas and you know the atlas of the world is basically a lot of charts that cover our globe Okay, so with that knowledge, um, it's a little bit abstract and mathematical, but it is needed to build the concept of um, GIS coordinates because we need to talk about what is the underlying space that we are dealing with in GIS. And we are dealing with our Earth. The Earth is mostly treated as a sphere. And so if it is sphere, it is a non-Euclidean space. But locally, over a small region, it can be treated as flat. So we can use two coordinate systems. If we are living in a local region and only interested in the local region, we use plane geometry and we use plane uh, Cartesian coordinates. But if we are looking at a global problem, then we are interested in all of the points on the surface of the Earth. In that case, we treat it as a sphere and we use spherical coordinates. And potentially the, the difference between them is how we measure. In the spherical coordinates, any point on the surface of the Earth is measured using angles. So there's an azimuth angle and um, an elevation angle. But if you are looking at something locally, we just measure lengths, uh, the Cartesian coordinates that we uh, know from our engineering background.